Hi, everyone. Happy Disability Pride Month. My name is Nico Meyering, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with blonde hair kind of swooped over one eye, large dark glasses, and a checkered shirt, black and white, seated in front of a purple background. I'm honored today to be joined uh, by my friend Jacob Levy. Jacob, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks so much, Nico. Great to be here. Hey, everyone. My name is Jacob Levy. I'm a career coach, uh, educator, person with a disability. Um, physical description, I have short hair, glasses, a beard. Um, I have like a gray shirt on and a, in like a tan background. Fantastic. Thank you. So I've actually been someone who has benefited greatly from Jacob's uh, career coaching and career services on LinkedIn. Definite recommendation. Jacob, what does disability pride mean to you? Great question. Um, I actually just, I put a post out just like, mm -hmm. you know, seeing how I can help job seekers with disabilities. And I got a lot of great responses, you know, meeting with a lot of people. I actually got one comment that was quite negative. Really? Um, yeah. And, and, and I understood, I, I think I understand like where she was coming from. And it kind of sounded like, um, like a little bit of like self-loathing, perhaps because they had like a very negative experience. Okay. You know, possibly in the workplace, who knows? So I'm actually really interested to have like a, a, a private conversation with this person, just because everyone has their own story. You know, everyone has their own rationale, right? Um, but I think, you know, disability pride means like, I'll just speak for myself. I'm not going to speak for anyone else. Um, you know, <laughs> my disability is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's been there since birth. Um, I acquired a learning disability at birth due to hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is essentially a brain hemorrhage. It literally means water on the brain. Um, so it resulted in like short-term and long-term memory retrieval issues. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not going anywhere. So, you know, I, I, figured, I figured I might as well embrace it, right? Instead of like hiding from it, which I definitely did for many years. Mm -hmm. um, but I did find out that I had like, I had certain strengths. Um, for example, I, when I was a kid, um, I took piano lessons. And I could sit at a piano even before I took lessons and I could play back whatever I heard on the radio, TV, movies, whatever. Like I just instinctively, would, I, I had, um, my hearing was pretty, pretty high. Um, my wife will disagree. because She says I don't listen to her, but whatever. Uh, but no, like I think when there's a deficiency in the brain, um, like I have a lazy eye. I have to wear glasses. I wore a patch as a kid. Oh, to me too. My vision. Okay. Um, I think when there's a deficiency in the brain, it will tend to like rewire itself mm -hmm. inadvertently to compensate for that weakness. Okay. I can't say what it might be. I think in my case, um, you know, I've heightened like strengths. So like with music, um, I don't have perfect pitch, but I have perfect relative pitch. So if you, if you played me a song in the radio and you told me the first note, I could play the rest of the song. That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a skill that I have. I've been doing it for, since I was five years old. Um, and, but yeah, that's just like one tool in my toolbox. And so with that skill, I actually figured out how to use it as a strength to aid my own memory recall. So like the most basic example is like how we learn the alphabet mm -hmm. in, the, in the US, you know, we learned it, we learned to read and write it, but in my opinion, it sticks because it's associated with a melody. And I don't know if you know the melody, it's a, it's a children's nursery rhyme. If you know, like the, do you know the name of the melody? Mm -hmm. So it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Ah, uh, yes. The right? old Jedi. So, yeah, I mean, there's a million other tunes too. It's the same, like, so basically someone had the, it, and I think Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was actually a Mozart tune back in the day. It's just somebody adapted it to a children's nursery rhyme. 
So basically I figured out how to do the same thing, um, to, but take any song and apply it to any task for memory recall. So whether it's like basic tasks, academics, you know, stuff like that. Um, and that's how I'm trying to like help other people with disabilities and memory issues as well. That's fantastic. I really resonate when you talk about your disability as a part of you that's not going anywhere. So learning to live with it, navigate with it, and find ways to work with it, that really resonates with me so often. We hear life with disabilities or chronic illness as uh, fighting with yourself or as a daily battle. And that, I don't know, to an extent seems kind of self-defeating to me because if it's a battle every day, then you have to win every day. And that's a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Um, I recently put out a post about it and I, 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 I basically started this series kind of like Dear Abby, mm -hmm. like back in the day, but I call it Dear Disability. Okay. Um, it's basically like me talking to myself. And one of them says like, uh, you know, Dear Disability, I won't let you quote unquote work with work me. Instead, mm -hmm. I will let you work with me. Yes. Um, because it's like, I'm still in control of, you know, of myself and I have a disability. It's not like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's part of me, but I still feel like I'm in control, so to speak. Absolutely. This is a very comprehensive answer. Jacob, what is one thing you want non-disabled people to know about disability life? Um, I think it's important that, so there are many disabilities, yes. right? <laughs> I am not a disability expert. I don't play one on TV. Uh, I'm not a doctor. Um, I think the most important thing for people that are not disabled and people that are disabled, educate yourself. If you don't know about a disability, there are 8 million resources. Um, th there's so many things available like at your fingertips these days. Um, I mean, I, I will say like, you know, there are people that don't necessarily have a as much access, mm -hmm. but I think that there's, there are ways to gain access to things, right? I mean, the internet, um, if you don't have access to the internet, there are public places where you can, I mean, the library, like things like that. I know that there's, you know, places all over the world that are not as accessible, but I would just say education, right? get educated. If you work with an employee that has a certain disability, like don't look at them like they're like, you know, this, this uh, UFO, right? They're not a unidentified object. They're a human, right? They may be a little bit different. They may learn differently. They may um, consume information differently. So educate yourself. If there's no resources on that, talk to them. Right. Ask them questions. I think it's very empowering to ask questions. Mm -hmm. It definitely right? allows the person who is disabled to give answers and to advocate for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Um, knowledge is power. It is. Thank you so much. You touched on this a little bit before, but what are some lessons that disabled, that being disabled rather, has taught you? Grit grit like relentless grit i think true people grit, with disabilities like movie. what's that true grit like the john wayne movie and the jeff bridges movie yes yeah great movie um yeah but just like relentless grit i didn't know how much grit i had until i understood that failing at something is really a, a necessary ingredient in success yes like if you want to succeed at something you're gonna fail like i'm sorry you are going to fail but you have to understand it that it is one step in the ingredient to, in the you know recipe to success mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean i just I, I would say one thing is i've just learned to develop like an unbelievable grit and resilience um, that from the outside to, you know, to the naked eye, whether the person is disabled or not, they're like, 
wow, this person, you know, they're really strong and this and that, you know, well, that, that is developed in my opinion. That is, that comes through life experience. That's not, I mean, sure. Maybe it could be um, innate. Like someone is just naturally has grit. I don't really believe that. I think you have to develop grit through hustle and like constant failures and try and try and try again. Um, I don't, I'm not going to quote exactly, but I know Michael Jordan, he shot X amount of shots, um, you know, free throws and missed this many opportunities and he just kept going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would definitely say like grit and being resilient. Fantastic. I believe Adventure Time tells us the first step to being bad at something, being bad at something is the first step to being good at something. So all we can do is fail better next time. Exactly. Exactly. Jake. There's a great, um, um, there's a great quote by, I think it's Richard Branson, the CEO of Virgin Atlantic, mm -hmm. um, where he talks about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And he says that entrepreneurship is like jumping out of a plane and building a parachute on the way down. Huh. Yeah. That's it was good. pretty... It made sense, right? Because like entrepreneurship is just like constant problem solving, putting out fires. Um, that's why I think people with disabilities, we make some of the strongest entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. Whether you're not whether or not you're an entrepreneur or you want to be, um, we're constantly solving our own problems. That's true. So it, it, it's a good use case, I would say. <laughs> we're definitely solving problems tomorrow ably exist in a world that isn't always built for us so we're always innovating yes all right jacob thank you so much for joining me and i have our last question which is what have you had to unlearn as a result of being disabled wow that's a really good question and i saw that question and i still like had to think about it that's all right um what did i have to unlearn I'm not even sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm always, I'm always like tweaking things. I'm okay. always, um, even if I learn, like, okay, here's a good example. I'm doing all these professional development courses, mm -hmm. um, as an educator. So I'm a, I'm also a special education teacher and I have to do all these PD courses. Um, so I'll watch a, like a 30 minute video. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like my, if it's not like, if I'm not totally engaged, that's the thing about like um, metacognition. So metacognition is basically learning how to learn, mm -hmm. right? Like how, like you might learn differently and I might learn differently, right? Sure. I do, I'm, I'm about like, I learn with like audio, visual, even tactile kinesthetic, right? I have to like physically grasp something. Um, so I might have to watch a video like twice to fully engage, right? And that's something I'm always learning about myself is like, you know, I might need to watch something two or three times versus my, you know, able-bodied peer next to me can watch it once and they're done. Mm -hmm. So that's something that like, I'm, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's like I something I had to like reteach myself. Yeah, no. When I thought of this question, I thought of examples of my own life and how I've had to let go of the expectation that I would be perfect the first time or that there was always only one right way to do things. So I've had to free myself from that burden that ultimately was never mine to bear in the first place. It's a fantastic question. Uh, Jacob, I have loved talking to you. Um, it is true what you say. The disability community is so wide and diverse that there's no one disabled perspective, disabled experience, disabled culture. Rather, we have many experiences and many perspectives and many cultures. Do you have any uh, last words? And where can people find you online if they want to connect? Yeah, I really have enjoyed um, this experience as well. I'm, I definitely follow you, Nico, with all your awesome content. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, last words. Uh, I always love ending with the, the quote um, that I mentioned before that like 
or I don't, I don't think I mentioned, I've been on like so many calls already That's um, right. that, so what I believe and plenty of people will give me crap about this, but it's my own. So um, a disability is not an inability to do something. Okay. I believe it's an opportunity to go an alternate route um, to arrive at a solution. Okay. And, and it's on this path where new and innovative ideas exist. So that's my belief. Um, it, it, I think it, I developed it through that whole like grit and perseverance thing. Um, and then where people can find me, I'm, I'm heavily rooted on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I'm also on Clubhouse. Searchable is the name of my service um, where I provide like LinkedIn optimized profiles, resumes, boot camps, workshops, all sorts of stuff to help job seekers with disabilities. Fantastic. And it is a service with a high need. Thank you for all you do for our community, Jacob. My pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Nico. Of course. Take care. Take care.